Welcome to the body imaging cases. This is a 53-year-old male with abdominal pain and jaundice of one week duration. The MRCP, that's to say the magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, shows marked dilatation of the common bile duct down to its lowermost end and also the intrahepatic bile ducts and the gallbladder but normal caliber of the pancreatic duct. We can see the pancreatic duct joining the lower end of the common bile duct as expected normally. We are having two communicating ducts. One of them is dilated and the other is not. And to explain this situation, we have two scenarios. Either we are dealing with an obstructing malignant neoplasm of the lower end of the two ducts, that's to say at the ampulla of fatter or the pancreatic head. But in this case, we cannot explain why the pancreatic duct is not dilated. The second scenario is that we are dealing with the colodocal cyst. So the situation now is that there is no obstruction and the dilatation of the common bile duct is due to the congenital weakness of its wall. And since the pancreatic duct does not have this congenital weakness, then it is well explained that it should not be dilated. The transverse T2 weighted images show dilatation of the intrahepatic bile ducts. Dilatation of the common bile duct. Normal caliber of the pancreatic duct. And at the lowermost end of the common bile duct, we see something. We don't know if this is a stone, a tumor, or a sludge. And at the subsequent image, lower down, we see something which is slightly hyper intense than the rest of the duodenum. But again, we don't know if this is a tumor at the ampulla of fatter or a partial volume averaging of the high signal intensity at the lowermost part of the dilated common bile duct. And inferior to this level, we don't see a significant mass lesion. So the T2 weighted images could not help us choose one of the two possibilities. It may still be a colidocal cyst with some sludge, debris, or stone at the lowermost part. And in this scenario, it is well explained that the pancreatic duct would not be dilated. Or we have still to take the more serious scenario of an obstructing mass at the ampulla of fatter. We could find an old CT of the same patient done for the urinary tract. And we can see that the common bile duct is not dilated. It is quite counterintuitive to say that this is a colidocal cyst, while on a previous imaging study, the common bile duct was not dilated. So we are back to the assumption of obstruction. The gadolinium enhanced MRI shows here dilatation of the lower part of the common bile duct. And the normal pancreatic duct joining it. At the ampulla of fatter, we see enhancing small lesion projecting into the duodenum, quite suggestive of an ampullary carcinoma, because we have, of course, to take the worst scenario in setting up the working diagnosis. We can see here the early and the delayed gadolinium enhanced MRI, and the enhancement is more pronounced on the delayed image. We see it also on the coronal T1 weighted gadolinium enhanced images. Here at the lower end of the dilated common bile duct.
So back to our MRCP and we are trying to know why the pancreatic duct is not dilated. Here with certainty we see another duct coming from the main pancreatic duct and with more fantasy we see that there is an accessory pancreatic duct going to a minor papilla and with still more fantasy we can see the crossing duct here so it is quite possible that we are dealing here with a patent duct of Santorini that is draining the pancreas into a minor papilla and therefore the pancreatic duct is not dilated although it is obstructed at the major papilla and when we go to the volume rendered images of the same MRCP we see quite well that our fantasies are true We definitely have an accessory duct coming from the main pancreatic duct and crossing in front of the dilated common bile duct to reach the minor papilla and the drain there in the duodenum. The minor papilla is anatomically anterior and superior to the major papilla. Endoscopy has been done and revealed that the ampulla has a mass which is ulcerating and endoscopic ultrasonography shows the dilated common bile duct containing sludge and the normal caliber of the main pancreatic duct joining its lower end and a mass intervening here between the dark fluid of the common bile duct on one side and the dark fluid inside the duodenum on the other. Quite impressive of an ampullary carcinoma. PET-CT shows the lesion to be metabolically active. And this is a detailed view of the duodenum on PET-CT showing the metabolically active tumor at the second part of the duodenum. Histopathological diagnosis has been moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma of the ampulla of fatter. So the diagnosis has been made and the anomaly of the pancreatic duct has been described. And the dilemma of the non-dilated pancreatic duct solved. The obstruction is here. The pancreatic secretions coming to this part of the pancreas will go retrogradely this way and then will go and drain via the patent duct of Santorini and the minor papilla into the duodenum and also the pancreatic tail will drain the same way but the mission is not fully accomplished because the task of imaging is not only to provide the diagnosis but also to help with the treatment plan. In this case, it needs to provide the surgeon with a roadmap because the treatment here should be a Whipple's procedure and the surgeon needs to cut the pancreas as part of the procedure. And if the surgeons are not aware of this anomaly and they want to cut here, they will anastomose a single pancreatic duct leaving the second one to leak and if they are aware of that based on the information given on imaging then they need to anastomose two ducts not only one which is a difficult task so the choice was to cut in the part of the pancreas which has a single duct but then imaging is required now to provide the data as where is the junction point of the two ducts. The problem comes here from the fact that we see the junction point on the MRCP, but we don't see the pancreas. And on the sectional images, we see the pancreas, but we don't see the meeting point of the two ducts.
This is a reconstruction of the pancreas in volume rendered technique. And the neck of the pancreas, recognized by the concavity of the superior mesenteric vein, is um, depicted in pink. The rest of the pancreas, head on one side and body and tail on the other side, are depicted in yellow-orange. There are three scenarios now for the surgeons who want to cut the pancreas as part of the Whipple's procedure. But where is exactly the meeting point of the ducts? For this purpose, we need to perform image fusion of the MRCP and the pancreatic parenchyma as taken from the T1 weighted images. And here we see the junction point and we know from the fusion of the images that this is at the pancreatic neck. Now the surgeons know that at the concavity formed at the pancreatic parenchyma by the superior mesenteric vein, which is a very good landmark, the duct of Santorini joins the main pancreatic duct. Accordingly, the plane of section could be at the part of the pancreatic body immediately next to the pancreatic neck. Diagnosis here has been moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma of the ampulla of fatter, persistent duct of Santorini draining into the minor papilla and joining the main pancreatic duct at the pancreatic neck. The learning points are ampullary carcinoma may present by obstructive jaundice, while the lesion is very small and occasionally difficult to see on CT and MRI. This is a grace, of course, the early presentation, a grace for the patient because the tumor can be removed before it spreads, but it represents a problem for imaging which may sometimes be unable to see the lesion. Enhancement of the lesion on gadolinium enhanced MRI may help and may be a reliable sign for the diagnosis of ampullary carcinoma. Endoscopy and endoscopic ultrasonography are very useful methods for diagnosis, particularly that a biopsy can also be taken. Typically, MRCP of patients with ampullary carcinoma shows dilatation of the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct, the so-called double duct sign. However, drainage of the pancreas via a persistent duct of Santorini into the minor papilla may keep the pancreas well drained and the pancreatic duct normal in calibre. Volume rendered technique is superior to maximum intensity projection in demonstration of the patent duct of Santorini. It is quite unusual for the junction of the duct of Santorini and the main pancreatic duct to be at the pancreatic neck. Imaging is not only concerned with diagnosis, but should also be concerned with treatment planning in this particular case, determination of where the pancreas should be sectioned during the Whipple's procedure has been dependent on the imaging findings. Image fusion is a useful post-processing technique. The junction of the anomalous ducts is well seen on the MRCP, but the pancreatic parenchyma is not and the pancreatic parenchyma is seen on the T1 weighted MRI, but the pancreatic duct junction point is not seen. So image fusion could solve the problem.